Continuing to look at historical osteopathic methods as described by early writers, we're looking at a description from Carl McConnell talking about essentially using, uh, in seated, using the weight of the patient in order to help you work on the vertebral column. He says, more or less, what you're going to do is you're going to grab around the patient's shoulders, right? So you have to be close to the patient in order to do that. Then you have, you're probably going to reach around like this. Now, the thing that I would say is a problem with this is that if you just blindly reach around, it's entirely possible that without paying much attention, you may hit the patient's neck. So it can be quite uncomfortable. So I will do it that way. But what I want you to understand is that the closer you get to the patient's neck before you reach around, the more likely you are going to hit their neck. So as you put your, if you're going to do it without changing the patient's hands, which I will show in a moment, then make sure that you aim your bicep at their shoulder. Right? Because your bicep on their shoulder, you're less likely to hit, to more or less hit their neck. Now, this, that said, what you've got is a good example of contact is control. So, lots of contact wrapping around the front of the patient, contact with my body against the side of the patient's back, and then he just talks about whether it's flexion, extension, or whatever other movement, you just move the patient in small ways. So, you have this hand to be short lever on the vertebrae, you have this hand to control the long, relative long lever, and you're working through here, right? So you use the weight of the patient's body in order to work on what you want, right? So if I want side bending to that side, what I do is I lean that way, right? And then the patient side bends to that side. Bends to that side. If I want a side bend to this side, I lean this way, right? If I want relative flexion, or sorry, re re yeah, relative flexion, I have to lean forward. So the problem with this becomes set the tables in the way, and eventually I'm going to have to unweight my front, or my back foot rather. Extension, leaning back, rotation to this side, I twist that way, rotation that way. So I've got lots of control based on the fact that I've got so much contact. So I can do a lot of motion. So you've got that relative long lever and a relative short lever. Now what I will say is to avoid the likelihood of hitting the front of the patient's neck, just have them cross their arms like they're hugging themselves. So some people will be able to do it like this, some people it'll be closer down to their elbows, right? So cross your arms like you're giving yourself a hug, right? Now, because you're going to be forced to hit their forearms, right? You're gonna, you're gonna come across this, you're gonna stay away from their neck, and you're actually almost gonna have more contact, right? And more ability to move around. So you may, you'll see I'm close to the neck, right? It's actually hard to see, but my bicep is touching his neck, but I'm not going to choke him because my forearm is on his forearms, right? And I can also grab much lower, right? So my hand is about here on his arm. So I can actually probably, nope, can't quite expose that to the shot. But my arm is, my hand is not on his shoulder. I can grab lower, right? So I have more opportunity for control if I have him cross his arms like he's giving himself a hug, right? So if I want to create extension, it's easier for me to do, or I can get more of it. I can get a little bit more rotation, right? I can exaggerate it all a little bit more as far as side bending is concerned, depending on what I want to do. But this is just using the patient in seated and the freedom of motion that a seated patient has and having a good hold with lots of contact in order to use the patient's weight. So this is predicated on the freedom, so the lack of control from the table. So in this case, you know, less stable means I need to make the patient more stable, right? So contact is control, that's one way that I do it. The space between us is unstable, minimizing negative space. So all of these concepts come into play where I'm choosing, or I would be choosing to have the patient sit to have freedom of motion, but I have to have good contact in order to deal with that. And then I can get plenty of motion. The thing that gets in the way of the motion is if you have them on the table, is the table, because you'll have to run into the table at some point. You can have them sit at the ends of the table to minimize that to some degree, or you can have them sit on a stool. A stool gives you the most freedom of motion in this particular situation, but it also removes a little bit of control, right? So depending on your height, the patient goes a little lower, you might have to do a little bit more muscular work. But your basic concept here is that you have a long lever in holding around the shoulders, you have a short lever on the vertebral column, whether it's the heel of your hand, your thumb, whatever you do. So you have a long lever and short lever for mixed leverage, and you have lots of contact. And then essentially what you're going to do is you're going to have all things moving at the same time. So it's not necessarily clean with respect to relational motion, one thing staying still and one thing moving. It's both things moving in most cases, so you have to pay a lot more attention.